Today is Veterans Day, a day which allows the Canaan Baptist Church of Christ family to recognize and honor our veterans and military members. But first, let's look at why and how we came to celebrate this day. Veterans Day, which was first called Armistice Day. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, of 1918, an armistice was declared between the Allies and Germany, ending World War I. One year later, in November 1919, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day. In 1926, Congress declared November 11th as the date to celebrate the anniversary of the end of World War I. In 1938, Congress passed an act that named the day Armistead Day and made it a legal holiday. In 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower acknowledged there had been two other conflicts since 1926. World War II and the Korean War and changed the name to Veterans Day. From then on, November 11th became a day to honor American veterans of all wars. During World War II, it was so much was going on. You know? One of Canaan's oldest veterans is 95-year-old Adolphus Lutzen, who served in World War II. He recalls arriving in Europe for combat. I was landing on the beach in, um, in France. That, that's when the ship was, uh, when you can see a lot of ship was sticking up out of the water where they was bummed, you know. See, because a lot of those places was uh, booby trap, you know. It was mine in the water and soldiers was just floating around. Adolphus would learn firsthand how dangerous war was. Your friend, you can see them. They are shot. They are wounded and stuff. They can't move. And a lot, you just can't just stop to take care of them. You got to try to take care of yourself too and keep moving. Sergeant was right next to me when an artillery shell explore and cut his him in half. I was wounded in the arm, shrapnel in my arm, shot in my leg, and wounded in my head. Mr. Lotson would be rewarded for his bravery and dedication to his country. I have a Purple Heart. A war is something. Uh, it's terrible. There's so much is really going on. A lot of people think, uh, 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 you're a soldier and you just in the army, but it's not that you are fighting. You are fighting the, the enemy. 
But as some soldiers learned in war, sometimes your enemy isn't from another country. Alan Costin left Brooklyn out of high school and enlisted in the United States Marines. Why did I enlist? Honestly, uh, to get off the streets of New York. My train was very intense. Um, it lasted for uh, three months. And I believe that the uh, it's probably one of the hardest training uh, of all the military. Um, I thought that um, it was difficult. I didn't think I was going to manage. I didn't think I was going to make it, but I made it. Ronald Hardin also remembers how racism was prevalent during his service in the United States Army. In the negative sense, um, there's racism all over this world, even in the military. And 20, 30 years ago, it was there. 100 years ago, it was there. And it's still prevalent to this day. One of the things that the military, specifically the Army, it frowned on, and I was I seen it firsthand and I was told about it, is interracial marriages. And there was one young lady who was a major, and she was told she would never get promoted to lieutenant colonel or colonel because of her African-American husband. Um, they tried to say that she married outside of her rank because an officer should not be uh, fraternized or would have enlisted. But that just wasn't the case. These two individuals were in love. They had been married for 15 years, and her military career was kind of truncated because of that marriage. Um, and it was told to her that the highest she would be able to go is major. She wouldn't go no higher because of that um, her interracial marriage. But Hardin says he made every effort to make sure his time in the Army was beneficial. One thing I learned in that service is you can overcome a lot that you think that you will not be able to achieve. Deacon Robert Turner also served in the United States Army and says it was one of the greatest experiences in his life. And uh, from 1971 to 1974, uh, it was my privilege to serve in the United States uh, Army uh, with an elite uh, branch of the Army uh, called the Army Security Agency. Uh, I was a uh, crypt analyst and a, a Spanish linguist. Um, I was a specialist uh, fourth class. Uh, and uh, my time uh, while during uh, the uh, era of uh, Vietnam, um, I have nothing uh, but good memories of my time uh, in the military. But I think it's a good place for some individuals to start their career, uh, to get a footing, whether you're into athletics or uh, uh, engineering. You may not be able to get to that that college that you want to, that engineering college that you want to, but you could get that same experience and know-how through the military. And you could go to school and get your degree while you're there and serve your country and earn a good living. You don't have to do 20 years. So about your contract, we enlist maybe once, but you could get the same experience there as you would out here. If I had to do it all over again, would I do it again? Uh, just to get off the streets, yes, I probably would have done it again. Uh, I think I probably would have did a little more. Canaan's veterans all agree that the military had its difficulties, but they have incorporated their training to impact their lives today. But I think it's a good place for some individuals to start their career. I can't say enough about the uh, time that I uh, served in the military. There's a couple of things I learned. Uh, number one, I learned about discipline. Um, in my life now, I'm very disciplined in the uh, work that I do as far as being a basketball coach. Everybody knows me as a disciplinarian. Um, I think that's one of the good things that I got out of it. But I think the most important thing that I got out of it is that the military taught me how to be a man. Adolphus Lotson says many veterans find strength knowing that they are in the army of Christ and that knowledge gives them grace and courage in helping to protect our country. I thank the Heavenly Father for what he has done, you know, of saving me, you know. 
from what I went through. And this is why we pay tribute to our veterans. <laughs>